Friday the 12th, November 12th, 2021. I prepped these two tires already. I already showed you how to get the bottles in there. Like I said, you try and leave it so you got an in and an out for tying, an in and an out. These are a little loose, so you got to make sure you get the tight so it pinches down on them. There's a crusty one. I'll show you how I initially did it with the rope, just in case some of you already have the rope and don't want to burn your hands out on the fishing line. I use a constrictor knot. Try and get the rope laying to this side. The first one goes right over the top. See if I got enough stamina to do this whole video through. Normally I take a break after tying one or two leaves. Go up and underneath the other tire. Throw yourself some slack. Not that much. A little more. There we go. Put a little up somewhere in there. Okay. Pass it through again. The other side. Keep this one laying here. This is called a constrictor knot. In case you can't see it too well, you can look it up on the internet. Back under through. You'll see why I use this knot. Now, what you do is you go over this first rope, and up underneath the mess there, like this. Pull it up, get it up a little bit so I can get some slack on it. Use a little bigger rope than normal. So you can see. But with the constrictor knot, it's just like a ball constrictor. You can crank it down and it's not going to leak any back off. Let's get a little bit more on this one. So I can show you the knot. I've got to pull a little slack in. There we go. Now, I'm going to crank this baby down. You can see it when you crank it down. The tires compress and they stay compressed. You can back off, you can relax for a minute. Any other tie procedure I tried, blow pitch, everything else, this has been the best one so far. It's a nice tight one, but that's not going to cut it by itself. On an outrigger or bamboo or something, it might. But these are flexible, they're going to flex, so you need to back tie it onto itself. So you give one last good squeeze. Pull it up here, pull it up there yourself a knot. You can see the tires are compressed. These are a lot tighter than what they were. They're not going to come out now. And I usually give it, you can use 3 eighths. This is way too overkill. I use it so you can see what it is. I usually give it another one. Take her down. And then what I do is I zip tie it off right there. Zip tie it off right there. This is the underside, so you don't see the ugly knot, you just see the nice rope on top. That's the old way I used to do it. But with rope, you're going to have to put the inner tube on top of it. You cut a bicycle inner tube, loop it around, and protect the rope, make it last a little longer. Now we'll move over here to the bottle stuffing. I'll go over the bottle stuffing one more time, just in case someone missed it. If you've got two 1.25 liter Coke bottles in the side, One's got butt that way, the head this way, the other butt this way, that one there, just put the other one. The other ones go in, just the opposite. This is a 1.5 liter. This one here is going to be a little bit tighter because it came off a narrower rim. Some of them get really nasty if they're really tiny. Rim. That one goes that way, the other one goes opposite. you got the neck here, the button here. There she goes. Same way that, make sure you squeeze them. Make sure they're not going to hold any air. You can get any air out. This goes the opposite direction. There we go. So we got one here. It's got a little bit of liquid in it. I haven't had the time to do an experiment to see if a bottle lasts longer without liquid or without, but just to be safe. I'll drain the liquid out. This is still one of my favorites. This is a bias ply 12 inch. It says MRF on the side. Kind of strange. It's not a material recovery facility. When you're done, that's how they should look. Now we're about ready to back it up to this white boy here. But I'll show you what we do to get to the nylon line here. I'm trying to lay out. You can lose 
Right there. Okay, now we'll just move it back on itself. You can stand them up on your side, loop it through one strand at a time. It takes forever. It really looks beautiful when you're done. All nice and lined up. When you're doing 50 tires, it's kind of hard on your hands. And you're fine. And then you pull it back until you've got that. We'll make four strands out of it. Four strands is off the six is too much, five is too much, threes. And then you end up with this. That's what you want. Now we're going to strap this baby together. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. It's a little bit hard on your hands. But not the line, it's just the strength required. Eventually, now this one here we want to definitely have to let it up about like so. Now we're going to stick this one underneath. And up under the other tire. That's the nice thing about this. You don't have to flip the tires when you're doing this one. You can try and line it up a little bit. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's definitely strong. The same thing has to happen here. You've got to be able to cinch these tires down. That's the final equation for making it tight so the bottles don't slip out. You can line up your strands a little bit to make it look a little bit further. Like so. Now the trick is, when you're cinching it down, you've got to end up with your knot right over the middle here. And I'll show you why. Get back down in there, crusties. Right now it's too far over, so we've got to shift it a little bit past where you normally would. Bring it back. Still a little bit off, some tire compression. Should be good one. A little bit more. Right about there, should be right. There we go. Okay. There you go. Pull it pretty tight. A little too far. Yep. Give it a little bit more. Right about there. Let's see what that does. Better get this one tight now. There we go. Right about there. Once you've got it compressed, those tires aren't coming out between the bottles. Now you gotta start your knot procedure. And this is what, let's cut that guy there where my snippers go. Uh-oh, I'm always using my tools here. Go ahead and cut that one there because you're gonna need to tie it up. Yeah, this is what makes your hands tired. You gotta keep the tension on it. Just gonna tie a nice little knot in this bad boy. It ends up right over the center. And I'm gonna back tie underneath, back up on top. And it looks a little ugly on the bottom. It doesn't really matter because we we'll flip it over and it should be pretty on top. So you get your knot ready, cinch, and then you pull it tight where you want it. Pinch it down the best you can. Uh, and pull the knot back up on top. You want to make sure you got good compression there when you do it. If you got slack in it, not good. That one looks pretty good. Okay, now what you do is take two strands. Well, I didn't come up with this the first time. This is after many failures and different tries. Try and line them up to your goal. I got two strands, okay? One goes under one direction. unless you draw a little blood sometimes. Okay, so there we got it. Still compressed. Hold tight. Uh, now we're going to tie these guys off. Just like so. 
This is nice and snug now. Let me get one more. And that's what it should look like. Get ready. Now you can take a break. I'm gonna go grab my sweat rag. I'm dripping all over. Back. You might see a bunch of shirts in the background and wonder why I have so many shirts. Well, in the tropics here, even though I'm acclimated, I bike ride, everything else, I sweat less than the locals. You still sweat a lot when you work. I'll go through easily four shirts in a day here. I keep the buddy wash down there. Okay, now this is where the fun begins. You're going to lace it. There's a little groove right here in the bead where you can slip these through nice and easy. Then you just lace it back up. And it's just like a fishing line. My dad taught me all the fishing line tricks there. We're going to go about four times all you need. Keeping it tight. Let's see how she looks as she starts to back off a little. You can go five. Four usually does it. This one got a little twisted. You can take your time and make it look really nice and neat, but it's really not necessary. You can just swap the figures out. We're going to go one more. This one still wants to back off a little bit. So. One more time. So there's five loops through. And what you want to do is find a hole on this other side and leap this side through. There's one right there. Put both of them through. You pull those over to the other side. Now it's time to lace the other side. And it's the same way. Slip it underneath. Hope I don't run out of room here. This is our cam. It's not like my old camcorder. That kind of dates me. I got lots of videos here from 15 years ago. They're all in 8mm. I got some of them converted, but never had to worry about 4 gigabyte limit. Just ran for hours. So what you're doing here is lacing back down on top of the one from the other side, pulling it tight. There's no way this baby's going to back off. I'm just going to see what I'm going to do next here when I'm all done. Do the same thing, probably about four tries. One more try. Oh, I'm not kind of messy. There we go. It's a little better. Still a little messy. We'll do one more. Yeah, I got just about the right amount of line. This one ain't going to be too pretty, so I'm just going to show you what an ugly one looks like. Then the fun begins. Getting this one through, you need to go back over and feed it through a hole again, so don't back off. Everything I'm doing is basically back tying against itself. If it tries to get out of there, you don't have a chance. Especially when you see the final procedure here. There we go. Okay, now we take all of these here. All four strands are right here. That's what we're wanting. And the next step is, yeah, you gotta invest in a little bit of zip locks. These I sent over from Harbor Freight in the States. You can get a whole bag of them for like a buck. We've gone through a lot of them here. So down where the same little crack was there, you slip the zip tie in. And that would probably be enough, but I'm always an overkill. So I'm going to do one a little farther up here too. Pretty much it. Snip them off, slip it off, leave a little bit extra out there so it doesn't pull back through. Slip it off. Slip it off. And the dikes are getting a little bit dull, they're 20 years old. And that's pretty much it. It's very tight. The bottles are very snug now. They're not coming out of there. You can see you got some compression. You're not going to make that joint break apart at all. So I'll go ahead and flip it over here so you can see what it looks like. Right. 
when you're done, she's a beauty. That's what she looks like right there. Nice and snug. This one here I got twisted. You can do that a little better on the rope. But actually, the inner tube goes over these guys here because this will deteriorate in the sunlight. Even the 3 8 polypropylene or nylon line. This here I've seen last for decades. So that's pretty much the video for today. I'm going to get back 